In the first video, we learned that the world is made of incredibly tiny particles called atoms. Scientists have discovered that there are just 92 different kinds of atoms in the world, but it's unusual to find substances made up of just one kind of atom. Most are mixed together somehow, but when we do, we call it an element. This nugget of gold is an element because it is made of only gold atoms. Because there are 92 kinds of atoms, there must be 92 elements. Scientists have arranged these elements starting with those with the lightest atoms and going to those with the heaviest atoms. An element's place in this list corresponds to its atomic number. Because hydrogen has the lightest atoms, its atomic number is 1. Uranium has the heaviest atoms, so its atomic number is 92, and so on. Scientists later discovered that an atom's atomic number is directly connected to tiny charged particles inside the atom called protons. We'll come back to that in a later video. For convenience, each element's name is shortened to one or two letters, called its symbol. For example, hydrogen symbol is simply H. Each element has its own personality. That means its own unique set of properties. For example, gold is yellow, soft, malleable, dense, metallic, and an electrical conductor. These are its properties, and no other element is exactly the same as gold. In this video, we will meet almost 40 of the most interesting elements, discover what they like and what they're useful for. Let's get into the lab and check out some elements. This one I'm pulling down from the ceiling is element number one, hydrogen. It's so light it floats. You can see it's a colourless gas. That just means it looks like air. Oh, and did I tell you it's explosive? Now you know what I mean about an element having personality. Element number two is helium, and like hydrogen, is light and colourless. But it's not explosive. I guess that makes it safer, but less interesting, at a school fate. It also makes your voice sound funny. Element number three is a metal, lithium. It's a grey solid and it conducts electricity, like all metals. It has to be kept in oil because it reacts with nitrogen in the air. And it is also much less dense than water. This means it will float like a cork on water. Element number four is beryllium, also a metal. It is grey, light, strong, shiny and brittle. And it conducts electricity too. Element number five is boron, a brown powder. Element number six, carbon again. It's probably the most important element for living things, and without it, life could not exist. Carbon is an important energy source for us too, because coal is mostly carbon. Coal is a fossil fuel, that is, life forms from long ago that have been fossilized and can now be burnt for energy. I wonder if we will be fossil fuels one day. Element number seven is nitrogen, and here's some inside a light bulb. It's a colourless gas, just like air. Not surprising because air is mostly nitrogen. Nitrogen is quite unreactive, that is, it doesn't burn, and not many things burn in it. So it's good to use inside this light bulb. The filament won't burn when it gets very hot. Nitrogen is another key element for living things. Proteins are centred around nitrogen, and we have to get it from somewhere to build and run our bodies. Element number eight is oxygen, and looks just like nitrogen. Lots of things give off heat when they burn in oxygen, and this is its most important property. This is even why we breathe oxygen, to burn our food inside our bodies and get energy. Don't breathe the next element though. Fluorine is a yellow poisonous gas. A form of fluorine is added to our water supply to prevent tooth decay. I wonder if it's safe. 
Neon is a colourless gas that is famously unreactive. It's also famous for glowing yellowy-orange in neon signs when zapped with electricity. Lots of elements do this when zapped, but with their own special colour, which is called its spectrum. You can tell what element it is by what colour it glows. It's a part of its personality. Neon and sodium, number 11, couldn't be more different. Sodium is a soft, malleable, silver-white metal. It's so soft you can cut it with a knife, like you can butter. And being a metal, it's a good electrical conductor. It also reacts explosively if it makes contact with water. Is that why you don't find many sodium bridges? Magnesium is also a silver-grey metal, yet it's also quite strong. Having an atomic number of only 12 makes it light, so it's a good element to build aeroplane engines with. But there's a problem. Magnesium burns if it gets too hot, and some aeroplanes have caught fire for this reason. But it's perfect for sparklers and fireworks. Aluminium is a strong and light metal too, but it doesn't catch on fire, so that makes it a more useful metal to make things with. It's the third most abundant element on the Earth's crust, so that makes it cheap. Notice how the fridge magnet doesn't stick to it. That's telling us that it's not magnetic. Silicon looks like a metal, but it isn't. It's shiny, grey, brittle, and it makes up over a quarter of the Earth's crust. Because it can conduct electricity a bit, it's called a semiconductor, and this makes it perfect for electronic chips in computers. This yellow crystalline solid is sulphur. It's a soft non-metal, which means it doesn't conduct electricity, but it does burn pretty easily and forms a choking odour. In the Bible it used to be called brimstone. Chlorine is a yellow-green poisonous gas. If you want to know what chlorine smells like, take a little whiff of household bleach, but do it carefully. Bleach releases some chlorine gas. It was used as a weapon in World War I and in the Iraq War on both sides. Because it has an atomic number of 17, it's denser than air, so it clings to the ground level where the troops are. On the plus side, it's a great antiseptic agent and bad news for bathroom germs. Argon is similar to neon. It's a colourless gas that is very unreactive or inert. The name comes from the Greek word for lazy, argo. Because it doesn't burn and nothing will burn in it, argon can be streamed over the arc of welding to prevent fire from breaking out. Air is about 1% argon, so it's pretty cheap and easy to make. Potassium is another silver-white metal that, like sodium, is soft and explodes in both water and air. Don't go there. Skipping to number 22, titanium is a light grey, shiny metal that, weight for weight, is the strongest metal of all. That's where it gets its name from, the Titans, Greek gods of strength. It doesn't rust, so it's ideal for making aeroplanes, spacecraft, missiles, and artificial bone implants in people. I've got one in my jaw. Oh, and there's a building made out of it, completely, in Bilbao, Spain. It's called the Guggenheim Museum. Chromium is a hard, strong, shiny metal that is fabulously resistant to corrosion, which makes it almost sparkle. When molten chromium and iron are mixed, then cooled, they make stainless steel, which never rusts. Whenever metals are mixed like this, an alloy is made. Bronze and brass are alloys made from mixing other metals. Alloys often have more useful properties than either of the metals that make them, for example, they are usually harder and stronger. Manganese, number 25, is nothing to write home about. It's a grey, hard, brittle metal, 
but it corrodes a bit, so it's not very shiny. But when manganese is added to other metals, it makes strong, useful alloys. Iron is special, and it's perhaps our most important metal. It's grey, shiny, and surprisingly soft in its pure element form. Have you ever bent a nail? That's easy because it's almost pure iron. Check out the fridge magnet. It sticks. Iron is magnetic. The Earth's core is made of molten iron, and that's why the Earth has a magnetic field, and why we can use the ancient Chinese invention, the compass, to find north. This field also bends the dangerous solar winds away from Earth and protects us. Planets without molten iron cores probably can't have life. This shows the solar wind bent by the Earth's magnetic field and making the atmosphere glow, a bit like a neon sign but with a different colour. When other metals, and often carbon, are added to iron, it makes the much harder and stronger alloy steel that can build our bridges, buildings and boats. Iron atoms like oxygen atoms, which is unfortunate because it makes it rust. But it's also fortunate because iron can carry oxygen around our bodies. The key atom in haemoglobin, the oxygen carrying part of blood, is iron. As an element, iron rocks. Cobalt is a hard, shiny, grey, magnetic metal, like iron, but it has the advantage of being non-corrosive. Cobalt is rarer than iron, so it is not as cheap to make stuff with. It's often added to other metals to make alloys. Nickel is almost the same as cobalt, and it's hard to tell them apart. It's shiny, hard, grey, magnetic and non-corrosive. But nickel melts and boils at a slightly lower temperature, and it's also more abundant than cobalt. Maybe that's why nickel is the main metal used in the US five-cent coin, which is also called a nickel. Not many metals are magnetic, so it's strange that three elements, one after another, iron, cobalt and nickel, are all magnetic. Why is that? One of the few non-grey metals, orange-coloured copper is soft, shiny, malleable, and a great conductor of electricity. Like many metals, it is also ductile, which means it can be stretched out into long wires, making it a great choice for electrical wiring. Your home is probably wired up using copper. And your water pipes are probably made of copper too. Brass and bronze are alloys that use copper as their main metal. Gallium's got an interesting personality. It's a solid, shiny metal that melts in your hand. It has a melting point of about 30 degrees Celsius. This means it's a solid at room temperature, but will melt when it warms to your body temperature at 37 degrees and it will refreeze when you put it down. How weird is that? Skipping to bromine, it's one of only two elements that are liquids at room temperature. It's ready brown and fumes with a vapour that has a choking odour, a bit like chlorine. Not a good idea to smell it because it's toxic and corrosive. Krypton is another colourless inert gas like helium, neon and argon. But unlike helium, a balloon filled with much heavier krypton will quickly fall to the floor. Oh, and it's Superman's home planet. Silver is a soft, shiny white, malleable, ductile metal. It is the best electrical conductor of all elements, but it's too expensive to be used in electrical wiring, except in special cases. Its name comes from the Latin argentum, meaning shiny grey. It has some commercial uses, 
but it's best known for making jewellery and was once used for making coins until governments replaced them with paper money and cheaper metals. Tin looks just like silver and shares its malleability and ductility. Unlike silver, it doesn't tarnish, so it's used as a coating on metals that do, especially on food cans. That's why they're called tins. Tin, when alloyed with copper, makes bronze. Iodine's rather brittle crystals are shiny and almost black, but they give off an iodine vapour that has a distinctive purple colour and an irritating odour. When dissolved, it becomes a great antiseptic. Being a non-metal, it doesn't conduct electricity at all. Xenon is another colourless inert gas, like krypton, argon, neon and helium. But it's much heavier. Its density is four and a half times that of air, so you can imagine how a balloon of xenon would go down. But it's rare and expensive, so we won't be doing that experiment. Gold symbol comes from the Latin aurum, meaning the glow of sunrise. It's the only yellow metal, and it is so unusually inert that, if you're lucky, you can find it as nuggets of pure gold. That is, in its element form. The gold atoms have not bonded to any other atoms to make different substances. Its heavy atoms make it particularly dense, and you notice this immediately you pick it up. Gold is mainly used as jewellery and as an investment hedge against paper money inflation. Mercury is one of only two liquid elements, the other being bromine. But mercury is special because it is also a metal. Its symbol HG comes from the Latin word hydrogyrum, meaning silver water. But don't drink it because it's very toxic. See how the 10 cent coin floats on top? That shows that the mercury is much denser than the coin which is an alloy of copper and nickel. Mercury was used a lot in thermometers and other instruments, but that has stopped now because of its toxicity. If you've been fishing, you've probably used lead as a sinker. That's because lead is so dense it sinks down in water quickly. It's also soft, malleable, ductile, non-corrosive, and like mercury, very toxic. The Romans used it for plumbing and many got lead poisoning as a result. It makes people go a bit mad, and some think that this contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire. Even in the first century BC, a Greek scientist, Dioscorides, observed the toxic effects of lead. Why don't people listen to scientists? But it's okay to keep using your sinkers, just don't eat them. Lead symbol PB comes from the Latin word for lead, plumbum, and that's where we get the word plumber from. Today it's used in batteries and to cover gaps on roofs and sinkers. Last but not least is the heaviest element of all, uranium. It was named after the planet Uranus, which was discovered a few years earlier. Uranium is a dense, shiny, grey, malleable, ductile and radioactive metal. It is especially hard and this property has been used militarily in making projectiles that can bust through heavily armoured targets. Ouch! We can't forget that the first atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima was also made of uranium. Double ouch! Even its civilian use as a fuel to produce electricity in nuclear power stations is controversial. But to leave on a positive note, these nuclear power stations don't make any carbon dioxide at all. Carbon dioxide is Earth's main greenhouse gas, which seems to be warming the planet up. Maybe uranium has a role to play after all. But I'm hoping that one of you, future scientists, will invent the perfect nuclear fusion reactor. That will solve our energy problems for good, with cheap, clean, endless power using hydrogen from seawater as fuel. You can start working on it now. This video has shown the dazzling diversity across 36 of the world's 92 known elements. Our next video will show how we can organise and simplify our 92 elements into a magic pattern called the periodic table.